And hi, everyone. I am Yolanda, co-founder of Harper Therapy. And I am here today with Jennifer Schapp, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist. And we are here every day. We want to share some hopefully helpful tips to get us through this COVID-19 crisis. And we want to give information in bite-sized chunks because we know that as a society, we are in like information overload to say the least. So we want to give some helpful tips um, to just kind of help everyone through the mental, emotional, and relationship toll that all of this crisis is taking on everyone. And today we want to talk about like what to do when the people in your house are on your very last nerve. <laughs> is that <laughs> is that a fair assessment, Jen? <laughs> yeah, I would say that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna share some tips today about how to use a time out um, for our relationships in, in an effort to get through this difficult time and, and it not cause permanent damage to our relationships. Now, a lot of us think of timeouts when we think of kids, um, but we can really use this as a tool in our uh, romantic relationships and our marriages and our partnerships as well with our kids, right? Yeah, exactly. I think timeouts are super effective um, during this time, really any time that you feel like the same argument keeps happening again and again. Yeah. Great. So why don't you go ahead and start? What is the beginning of your tips as far as time out? So um, my first thing I would say is I just want to normalize that if you are struggling to get along with your partner during this time, that's completely normal, especially if you're both working from home right now. That's a lot of time together. Um, yeah. That is a big change. Um, so the first thing I would say is in terms of time out, I will make sure that you want to talk to your partner together with what a timeout will look like. This isn't just a one person thing where one person comes up with it all. So uh, basically the first thing of a timeout is recognizing like, okay, I am going to get escalated to the point where I'm going to say or do something that I'm going to regret. So at that point, I would want one partner when they realize they're getting to that place to kind of maybe say like, I need a timeout, maybe make a tea with your hands, use a code word if you're that, if you're super upset. And at that point, you guys would go to separate rooms. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot a step. Before that, though, I would yeah. want to uh, have you guys determine how long of a timeout do you need? So you guys can kind of come up with that maybe before an incident happens. Like, I need an hour. I need two hours. Maybe you can go by incident to incident to kind of determine, like, how long of a timeout are we going to take? Yeah, I think that's a, a really, really great point to to have that understanding um, before you even try to use a timeout. Like, okay, let's start with maybe 20 minutes and then touch base. Or let's say that we need an hour uh, to really take some space so that we can kind of do what we need to do to uh, really be able to talk through this situation. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So and so during the timeout, what I would what I usually encourage couples to do is. I usually tell them, take that time, the first amount of time to do some self-care, maybe do some mindfulness, mm -hmm. do something that helps you feel more grounded. Maybe that's taking some deep breaths, anything to kind of get you from, like I like to use numbers, like a level eight frustration to maybe down to like a level four or five, whatever you feel like is more manageable. Um, yeah, it's really from that lower level of intensity that we're able to kind of bring solutions or even able to talk about situations that are difficult. Yeah, exactly. So it's like that time is like you time, time to mm -hmm. just decompress, get back mm -hmm. to a, a better level. Uh, mm -hmm. The second thing I say during timeouts for uh, couples to do is really take the time to realize what am I upset about? What underlying need am I not getting met in this situation? Um, by doing that, I feel like it can become more effective because the secondary emotion of anger may not be your main emotion. It may be yeah. that I'm feeling not heard or I'm feeling like, um, my partner doesn't care or something like that. So I always do that to kind of recognize, like, what am I feeling in this moment? Yeah, recognize what we're feeling and what it is that we're that we're needing and wanting in the moment. I love that, too. And how do we shift this complaint into a, into a request and a bid for a connection? Complaints yeah. are easy, right? <laughs> yeah. It takes a little bit more work to dig a little bit deeper and say, huh, what's really going on here for me? 
Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then also taking that time to just recognize that um, your partner is probably really struggling as well during this time and that most likely their actions aren't coming from a place of like them trying to hurt you. That we're mm -hmm. all trying to get our needs met. I like people to mm -hmm. kind of soften and recognize like, you know, we're both really struggling in this moment and their actions mm -hmm. most likely wasn't to hurt me. Right. Yeah. Having that generous assumption about our partner, remembering the things, the good parts, being intentional about that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so after your time is up, so whatever time you decide, whether it's 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, come back. And during that time, I usually encourage couples to use I language, avoid saying you like you do this. And because um, I don't want you to get back into that same cycle. While also mm -hmm. talking, keep in mind, again, that the positive aspects of your partner to help you not go back to that angry state. Yeah. Um, and keeping in mind what that underlying need was that you took the time out for and expressing that. Yeah. And I think this is, you know, when we talk about using I messages and I language, I think that we can kind of be a little bit um, kind of going around the, that, that idea of using the I and, and kind of turn that into a you. So, I, and I message isn't, I feel that you, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's, that's just the backwards way of saying you, you suck. Um, so it is, I feel, uh, you know, really lonely when you are always on your phone. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. When, we, when we're trying to eat or when we're trying to connect. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah, so I would say that's pretty much the steps for timeout. Super easy, simple. It's yeah. uh, really about taking time to just uh, get yourself more grounded, give yourself some time to think before you act out. And maybe yeah. even recognizing during this time um, that maybe you and your partner just need to take some space like during the day, be in separate rooms or something just to give yourself that space and that me time um, before yeah. uh, arguments escalate as well. So I, one of the reasons that I love doing these videos is that these are good solid reminders for myself as we're going through this difficult period of time, right? Because we're all human and we're all facing a really stressful period. And so last night I just felt like I was so on edge and part of that is I'm an introvert. And so all of this together time is, has been, you know, a little taxing on my nervous system. So I've noticed that I was on edge and I was like, I just, this has nothing to do with you guys. You know, my husband and my daughter, they were just having a good time. They were, you know, having a the regular evening routine. But I knew that after I stayed engaged in that situation, that I would probably do something or act in a way that I regretted. So I was really, I had to really be mindful and to just say, hey guys, love you. I need to take some space. So I went to my room and I snuggled with the dogs and with a book. So is that kind of a, along the lines of what you're talking about, Jen? Exactly. Yeah, I could definitely relate to that being a fellow <laughs> introvert. Um, yeah, especially if you're an introvert and you have maybe more of an extroverted partner. Yes, exactly. <laughs> because the introvert is just like, I need me time. And the extrovert's right. like, I haven't seen people for weeks right. now. The extrovert is like, I'm so bored. I'm so bored. I gotta, I gotta talk to people. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's exactly. Yeah. Taking some me time before you do explode. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right. So guys, uh, thanks so much for watching. And if these videos have been helpful for you, then just know that they're probably going to be helpful for, uh, some of your friends, family, loved ones. So if this has been helpful for you, then share it with your friends and family. Uh, like we said, we are all in this together. We're all trying to do the best we can. And, and on the other side of this crisis, just know that we've acted in our values and integrity and that things haven't totally um, fallen apart. So Jen, thanks for the tips today about timeout. And uh, we will talk to you guys soon. All right. Bye. Bye.